All right, everybody, sorry I had to do this in two parts, but I actually had a FaceTime call right in the middle of uh, my first video. So here I am picking up where I left off, and we're looking at this question again. I'm looking at um, a substitution for cos 2 theta. Cos 2 theta, if I look at this sheet here, has three different solutions. Um, I could pick any one of the three, and they, it should work, but the best one for me to use, I think, is the one that has sign in it only, because if I look at the rest of this question, I have only sign listed. So the one I'm going to use is this one here. It says 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in. So in place of cos 2 theta, I'm going to plug in 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. I'm going to bring everything else down. And one of the strategies that we learned this year was that if you have a trig function and it's the same throughout, instead of using that trig function, I can just use x in place. I'm going to rewrite this as 1 minus 2x squared plus 3x is equal to negative 4x squared. Now I've got a nice quadratic. I can go ahead and add 4x squared to both sides. That would um, enable me to get this to be equal to 0. So I'm left with a quadratic of trinomial 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. And I'm working on factoring this. And I know some of us are really great at our um, guess and check strategy. So if you're great at your guess and check strategy, go ahead and use it. I'm going to go ahead and show us how to use the split the middle strategy just one time on the side. If I want to use split the middle, I'm going to take the first term and the last term. I'm going to multiply those together. 2 times 1 is 2. Then you look for the factors of 2 that will add up to this middle term. The factors of 2, there's really only two choices, 2 and 1. 2 and 1 do add up to 3, so it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2x squared plus 2x plus, take my other factor, 1x plus 1 is equal to 0. So again, it's called split the middle because I literally took that middle number and I split it into two numbers that would equal that 3x. So why, what's the point of split the middle? Well, now I can factor by grouping here. So in the first two terms, I'll take out a 2x, I'll have an x plus 1. In the next two terms, I'll take out a 1, and I'll have an x plus 1. Again, this is called split the middle, followed by grouping. Then you take the um, two GCFs, put those together, 2x plus 1 times x plus 1. Again, if you want to skip these two middle steps and just go straight from the trinomial to these two binomials, that's perfectly fine. I just wanted to show you split the middle once, and I thought, hey, why not take advantage of the fact that I'm recording this? All right, so to finish this question off, I'm going to go ahead and make a t-chart. On the left-hand side, I get 2x plus 1 equals 0. Solve that, and you get x equals negative 1 half. On the right-hand side, I get x plus 1 equals 0. Solve that, you get x equals negative 1. It'd be nice if I could finish there, but uh, I can't because the original question doesn't have x anywhere. Let's see, where did I sub it x? I subbed x in this step, and before that, I subbed it in for sine. So that means i got to put sine back in here. Sine theta is equal to negative 1 half and sine theta is equal to negative 1. Okay, now we have a little bit of fun. All right, sine theta is negative 1 half. i got to go ahead and do my reverse Q, um, S, I'm sorry, I have to do my um, SRQ here. So it literally says negative, the reference angle. So I'm going back to that chart that we had. Um, I boxed in earlier. I'm looking for where is sine equal to 1 half. So let's see, the sine is equal to 1 half. That's happening at pi over 6. And I'm looking for the quadrant in which sine is negative. So to draw a little, all students take chemistry here. Sine is negative in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So to finish this question off, this is a very lengthy question. I'm going to go ahead and draw an angle of a, a picture of an angle in quadrant 3. So let's see, any angle in quadrant 3 here. And the reference angle is pi over 6. That's this piece here. And I'm looking for the entire angle from the x-axis all the way to that terminal side. Well, let's see. I know from the x-axis to this axis is pi. So I'm really just doing pi plus pi over 6. So that's what I'm trying to do in my mind. Uh, let's see. So pi, pi plus pi over 6. This is really the same thing as 6 pi over 6 plus pi over 6. So one answer is 7 pi over 6. I was right down, theta equals 7 pi over 6. That's one answer. And then uh, I also need an answer in quadrant 4. So we're almost there, everyone. Hang in there. So we're looking at quadrant 4. Here's my uh, angle in quadrant 4, any old angle that you want. 
Again, the reference angles between the angle and the x-axis, so I can label this as pi over 6. But we want the angle going all the way from the x-axis to this terminal side. I know that's 2 pi. So really what I'm trying to figure out is what's 2 pi take away pi over 6? Uh, let's see, again, 2 pi is the same thing as 12 pi over 6. Take away pi over 6. So I'm looking at 11 pi over 6. So those are my two answers on my left-hand side. And then I still have some answers over here. Um, sine is negative 1. That is a, uh, signaling to me to the, use the unit circle. Negative 1 is not in that chart that we had recreated. This is on the unit circle. So I'm looking for where is sine negative 1. Sine is really y. So I'm looking for on the unit circle, where is y equal to negative 1? That's this point right down here, 0 comma negative 1. So the final answer on this side would be 3 pi over 2. Whew, that was awesome. You guys did an amazing job. Thank you so much for trying your best. Again, I really appreciate your efforts. This is the example number two here. Um, I got caught halfway through my first video, so I'm just going to flip the page um, so you can see example number one one more time. So here's my example number one, um, just so you can see the, the note sheet that we had completed together today. Uh, again, thank you so much for trying your best. I really appreciate it. Um, I really do miss everybody. I miss your positive attitude, and I just hope that uh, we do see each other soon. Um, have a great day, everyone, and the example questions that I would recommend that you practice to go along with this, uh, we've got a homework listed here at 11-5. It's the worksheet that has four practice questions on it. I'll post the answers on WITS so that you can see, um, see how you did. Take care, everyone. See you soon. This is Mrs. Kirk. Bye-bye.